What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Reggie Bryant and I help people achieve their financial goals in today's economy. We're gonna jump straight into the topic today. Everything you need to successfully move out of your parents' house without having to move back in. So, I've made a ton of these move out videos. I get a ton of traction, a ton of new subscribers, a ton of comments and interaction with my content. And a lot of what I see is very emotional. Right. And so the, the first piece of advice, I'm just looking down on my notes, the first piece of advice that I have for you, because you only need three things to get everything you need to successfully move out. My first piece of advice for that is to let go of the emotion and focus on the outcome. So right now, there's a lot of positive and negative emotions associated with moving out, much like I had when I was younger. I was like, I can't wait to move out. They're so unfair. This, that and the third. I felt like I was suffocated. I felt like. I didn't have any freedom. I felt like I was already grown. So why can't I do X, Y, Z? Why can't I hang out with my friends? Why can't I come back home whenever I want to? You know, stuff like that. So you're going to feel these feelings and there's nothing wrong with that, but let them fuel your action. Don't just sit around feeling this way. And then the moment you have just enough money to afford the first month of rent, then you, you leave because then you're going to have problems, financial problems. So what you got to understand is this right here, is a financial based thing. So you have to be ready. You have to arm yourself and you have to focus on the outcomes and the outcomes are once I save this amount of money, I'm moving out. Once I have consistent work from a full time job, I'm moving out. And I say that because if you move out the first chance you get, chances are there's a lot of stuff that's unplanned for and unaccounted for. And when I say things like arm yourself, I provide a lot of free content. So for one, every single one of my videos on YouTube, all 305 of them are free. But on top of that, I give you free resources. So there's spreadsheets to plan out how to save. There's a spreadsheet to track your net worth. And if you don't know what your net worth is or what net worth even is, just stay tuned and keep watching this channel because I talk about it all the time. But on top of that, I created a whole move out guide and not that many of you have about downloaded it. I don't know what's going on, but like if, if you're really wanting to move out, I would have pen and paper. I would be downloading every spreadsheet, every tracker I could get a hold of because not everybody has them for free, let's be honest. But also, you have to start planning these things. It's not fun. Personal finance is not fun. I don't think anybody ever said that personal finance is fun, but it leads to fun results though. It leads to freedom and peace of mind and all kinds of things that you want probably right now. But the main thing you want right now is to move out. And one of the things you got to keep in mind is the mistake. This is number two, by the way, this is advice number two. You have to understand the mistake that 95% of adults make. So if you look very closely at this channel, it's not just about moving out. It's not just about investing. It's about how to be financially stable, how to get your life together, more or less, uh, how to save money, how to build an emergency fund. There's a lot of basic things that you're going to have to be able to do even before you even think about moving out. And it's because the world will humble you really quick. I had my life together, so to speak, when I moved out. But at the same time, life humbled me really quick because I, I wasn't aware that I was gonna feel this overwhelming sense of anxiety like, well, what if I lose my job? Or what if, am I doing as good of a job as I think I am? Or are they cutthroat? Are they gonna let me go at the first mistake that I make? Like these are real thoughts and real feelings that run through people when they live on their own. And if I was living at the house, you know what I'm saying, with my parents, I don't think I'll be feeling those same emotions. I'd still wanna do a good job at work, but I wouldn't be like, man, what if this doesn't work out? Like it's, it's a scary feeling. And so the best thing you can do is prepare yourself. But what do 95% of adults do? And I completely made up that statistic, by the way, but I'm pretty sure it's close to 95% of adults, at least in America. But the biggest mistake is they move out too early because everybody's parent is on this wave about you you got to leave when you're 18. I don't know what who came up with that, but the economy is literally not built for that. You need to stay home with your parents as long as you need to in order to build that savings account so you can actually take care of yourself and not rely on other people and ask other people, especially your parents for money. You need to be building up your skill set, holding down a full-time job. I don't recommend anybody moving out until you have a full-time job that is reliable and that's my advice because the economy's changing. Y'all have to change this. It's very unfortunate that back in the day, people used to be able to just 
move to a different state with $30 in their pocket and get a place and a job and get promoted and this, that, and third, buy a house, have kids, have pets, have a farm. Things are different right now. It's, it's not the same thing. A lot of assets have went up in value. Real estate, stocks, you name it, everything's gone up in value. So you have to elevate yourself to meet the standard of the current economy. You can't just get in your feelings and be like, I wanna move out because it's not going to work for you. I promise you it's not if you just do it off of a whim. You have to, you have, to have an exit strategy. And so when you look closely at this channel and the content, you'll see videos like how to stop living paycheck the paycheck how to become financially stable you'll see video titles like this is for anyone who is overworked and underpaid because these are very real issues there is a genuine realistic formula that you can follow to be as successful as possible once you move out but if you do things the wrong way you go out and you get an expensive car have a car payment that's weighing you down you might have debt from college or from your credit card that's weighing you down not to mention rent isn't what it says on the internet when they tell you it's eleven hundred dollars you can forget about it there's definitely hidden expenses that you're not seeing and you won't see it until the bill comes there's utilities not to mention the fact that there's groceries involved and that's if you're even the type to grocery shop and cook and all of that stuff a lot of y'all are going to go out to eat because it's the convenient thing to do that's what i did and i'm not judging anybody for it but you have to be able to account for these types of costs because if you don't you'll notice that you're not keeping very much of your paycheck and you also <clears throat> won't realize the simple fact that a lot of people your your bills are not evenly cut between your paycheck so if you get paid twice a month the first half of the month you might have your heaviest bills like your rent that's going to be enough for a lot of people that's going to be to uncut your paycheck in half if not more and then the second paycheck you might have a little more freedom and a little more money so you're going to have to manage it on that level so i say all that because i want you to take advantage of the free things that are available to you you have to arm yourself with the things that are free and even some things that are paid not anything crazy expensive but have you read a personal finance book i mean you have to these are things that you're going to have to start doing before you even think about moving out because if you're moving out but you haven't read a personal finance book and i've been in that boat so I'm speaking from experience here. If you move out, but you haven't read a personal finance book, you don't understand uh, strategies to get out of debt. You don't understand how to interview properly for a job or how to go for promotions. You don't understand what a 401k is or where to put your money into once you do get your life together and you become financially stable. Then you're setting yourself up for failure because you're gonna find things out years later when you're 24, 25, 28 years old like, man, I didn't know that. And then you'll find out that if you started much sooner, you would be a lot more wealthy. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to move out confidently and with a job where you're getting paid consistently and you're not missing days out of your work or anything like that. But what do most adults do? A lot of adults call out of work. A lot of adults have apartments or even houses that are way more expensive than what they can afford, but they wanna look successful in reality their their pockets and their wallets are about out of shape just because it looks like their pockets are in shape and they got money because they're riding around in a car that looks really nice and they're in an apartment that's really nice that doesn't mean their pockets ain't struggling just like me you know what i'm saying there used to be a time where i couldn't run a mile without gassing out and this was with muscles in a six pack you get what i'm saying I looked like I was in shape, but in reality, I wasn't. So that's exactly what their pockets are doing. That's exactly what their wallets are doing. Their wallets are crying from the inside, but on the outside, they look good. They look desirable. So you can't be worrying about looks and all this, that, and the third, because you can't cherish other people's opinions over your own financial well-being. Because if you do, that will lead to a lot of regret and a, a lot of problems that just don't even need to happen. These can all be avoided. So I do have a personal finance book. It's called The Welter and you can check it out, but you don't even have to just read like my book or if you don't want to read my book, fine. Read a personal finance book and just see what you think. Because the thing is, it's very hard to plan your life financially around what your goals are, like moving out, getting your first car or whatever the case may be. It's hard to do those things 
if you don't have any proper guidance when it comes to personal finance. A lot of people and a lot of our parents, for example, have done the best that they could as far as teaching you about finances, but a lot of it, especially in my case, it was more like save your money, right? And that's good advice, but there is so much more to money than saving it. You have to understand where to put it. You have to understand how to plan for it. You have to understand how to budget. So there's a lot of things that you need to avoid. Those are the mistakes that 95% of adults are doing. So I want you to download the move out guide, download the spreadsheets, just see what you can get knocked out on your own. See what you come up with. Read from other people's perspectives who have been through similar situations. And the last point, there's like three or four mistakes that 95% of adults do, but, but this one that I wanna touch on before we get to point number three is that just because you're in your feelings doesn't give you the right to just move how you feel you have to do what is right not what feels right all the time so for for example case in point a lot of people are working jobs that they hate whether that's part-time full-time it doesn't matter what level you're at you could be at the bottom level you could be at the executive level everybody within every nationality every age group every personality type has gone through an experience where they have hated the work that they do that doesn't mean you can just say, oh, well, I'm going to leave. That's the, that, that is the adult equivalent to moving out at 18. I'm moving out at 18 because I'm, I'm upset and my parents' relationship with me is toxic and they're mistreating me and, and this, that, and the third. And that may be true for you. Thing is, you got to play it smart. I believe there's a problem for every solution. So if you end up working a job you hate, you don't want to follow that same pathway of thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to leave. I'll find another job. Yeah in two to six months you don't know when you're going to get another job you don't know what's going to happen you don't leave anything without an exit strategy and you you got to dedicate some time to think about this stuff so as exhausting as your job may be and i've done it before i've worked at the most exhausting place that i can think of where we built tires and i was a manager over there and i was 21 and i stayed there until i was 23 and that was the longest almost two years of my life because I was working every day, seven days a week. And on the seventh day, instead of working 12 hour days, I worked eight hour days because that was giving me a break. So I was emotionally spent. I was like, F you. And it, like, I was thinking the worst possible thoughts a human being can think about other people, pretty much. Let me just put it that way. I could not stand the people that I worked for. I could not stand half of the people that worked for me because they were very rude. And every single day I fantasize about just walking out middle finger up and everything else but i didn't do it i had an exit strategy i made a plan and i had at this point i had read many personal finance books i made a plan i executed i saved like crazy i secured another job across the country that paid more i found a nice apartment across the country for a decent price but i did all of that with extensive amounts of research so I had an exit strategy and I got up out of there. So that's gotta be you for your parents as well or moving out of your parents' house as well because while I moved out at 18, what I did was I moved out, went to college, secured a high paying job, never came back home. That's the, that's the order I went in. I didn't just move out and was paying rent since I was 18. That ain't how it worked. The first year I was in college, it was all student loans. And then once my school found out I was about smart, then they wanted to start paying me grants and scholarships, which I would use toward paying for rent and things while I was at college and books as well. And I still had to work a part-time job in between breaks and everything like that, just so I could make sure I was good because I refused to let my parents pay for anything when it came to books and things like that once I started getting money myself. That's just how it was. Even when I was at college, I had a job going on, you know, just doing the research assistant stuff. Come up with a plan, arm yourself with the necessary things and avoid the mistakes that 95% of adults do so you don't end up like them. Because if you look at my wealth journey videos, you need to also watch those. Those are free. I'm bringing down my full finances. I'm telling you how I'm making money, what, how much money I'm making, 
how much my expenses cost and how much I'm saving every month. And I'm combining it to show you my entire net worth. If I had been doing this when I was younger, my net worth would probably be something like triple or quadruple what it is right now. But right now, as it stands, I have a good net worth that's within the six figure range and I'm happy with it. So watch those videos too. They're all linked below. Watch my previous move out videos. They're linked below too. And now we're going to jump into number three. There are levels to finances. You have to crawl before you can walk and walk before you can run out of the five levels what level do you think you're at if i'm making an educated guess you're probably young you're probably between the ages of 18 and 25 years old and you're probably wanting to move out of your parents place and you're probably trying to figure out ways how to do so you may or may not not have a full-time job there's a lot of variables with this stuff but that's level one and so I came up with this principle based off of my um, peer obsession with physical fitness, but it's called the gains principle. I just made it up. You're at the first level, you're level one. And level one is G. G stands for getting started. You're just trying to figure out how to build the amount of money it would require for you to move out and live on your own. But in order to achieve that, some personal development has to take place and some serious exit strategy planning is gonna to have to take place. And you have to give yourself a timeline and a deadline to meet those things by to hold yourself accountable. And you may even need to adjust it out a little further. And that's okay. You are light years ahead of someone who isn't doing that and just wants to move out because they feel like they're treated unfairly because they can't bring girls over or they can't party all night and then come back at three in the morning looking like everything's all good. So there's levels to this. And I'll talk about the gains principle some other time, but I am going to let you know each level what they stand for real quick, just in case you get a kick out of it. I call it the five phases of wealth. So we got getting started. That's G. Then we have A, that's adulting. That's once you've done moved out already. These are the responsibilities you have. Again, we'll make a completely different video about this, but the I in gain stands for investing wisely. I didn't just say investing, I said investing wisely. And I teach a lot about that within my content. I have a course about investing. Also, my clients have been very successful in doing so, I might add. N is net worth accumulation. And net worth is nothing but your assets minus your liabilities. So assets would be things like your 401k, your Roth IRA, your stocks, your cash in your checking account, your cash in your emergency funds, things like that. And liabilities are going to be things like student loans, auto loans, credit card debt, medical bills, stuff like that. Assets bring money to you. Liabilities take money away from you is the easiest way to explain it. And then S, the most important one is succession because I hate it when and I'm not going to go on another rant, I promise. But I hate it when people say, well, you're saving all that money and keeping all that money and growing your money. You can't take it with you when you go. OK, look, nobody ever. I don't know anybody that's tried to take money with them once they die. This is not the point. The whole purpose of this channel is to help you get right. Right. So you can save so you can invest and grow your money so you can live your life to the fullest and not have to worry about relying on any one particular source of income. And you can walk away at any given point and retire early and all this good stuff and then build a life insurance policy and investments, a plethora of investments so that once your successors, that's why this is called succession, once your kids, your wife, your husband, whoever you are, wherever you are in this world, whatever your goal is. Whoever's there when you're gone is going to get this. So that is what succession is all about. And I got fired up right there, but I'm getting sick and tired of people who say stuff like, well, you can't take it with you. You don't understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about money. I want you to understand to the fullest. No one is trying to take money with them when they die. You pass it along. That is what generational wealth is. But before we get to generational wealth, I want to help you reach your goal to move out. So make sure you download the free stuff that I was talking to you about. Make sure you read a book. If you want to read my book, it's linked down below and watch my wealth journey video so you can see exactly what's going on in my life financially. And I, I'll let you know the mistakes I made, the successes that I've had, all that stuff, all of it's on the table and right in front of you so you can see it.
So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Got a lot of venting out today, but I also put out a lot of good information that I hope y'all hold on to for a long time and pass it on to people you care about. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.